I had thought that true nuclear fusion was still years away and that therefore solar, wind and battery power was really the only true solution to the world going green. I mean, honestly, nuclear power plants, they seem great. They sound awesome in theory. Even these micro nuclear power plants, they sound really good too. But the truth is they're always more expensive. They always cost so much more than what they're meant to cost. They always take so many more years to build than what they're said to take. But suddenly... I think I might have had a change of heart. The reason is because of a single laboratory in America, which has achieved something which we should be looking at and thinking about. It's something that will unquestionably change the future of the planet. How much it will change the planet's future, I can't say exactly, but it will have an enormous impact, make no mistake. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'll be speaking as part of a panel on three occasions at Electrify Everything in Australia. That's from the 9th to the 11th of February. I'd love to see you. It's in Sydney. If you want a 20% discount on tickets, I'll put my promotion code in the description below. And kids are up to the age of 15 are free. So if you know any kids, take them along with you. Why not? The future of energy though, when it comes to the world's needs, we still need a lot of energy. I mean, for example, I had a conversation today with someone who works for a company who sells coal. And he was saying that if anything, they've had more demand over the past few months, even though so many, so much renewable energy is being built, enormous amounts. In fact, growth this year has been huge. The truth is though, we still do need an astronomical amount of clean energy to solve the world's global warming challenges. And this may happen sooner than what we realize, thanks to an American laboratory. In December of 2022, after more than a decade of effort and immense frustration, scientists at the US National Ignition Facility announced they had set a world record by producing a fusion reaction that released more energy than it consumed. Here's the key. No one in the past had been able to create fusion, true fusion creating a fusion reaction that released more energy than it consumed. This is the first time it had ever been achieved. A phenomenon known as ignition. They have now proved that the feat was no accident by replicating it again and again and again. And the administration of US President Joe Biden is looking to build on this success by establishing a trio of US research centers to help advance the science. Basically, the Biden administration is saying, you know what? We don't have the battery industry. We don't have the electric car industry that China has. We don't have the manufacturing industry that China has. But maybe this is how we can get ahead. And it could be right. The stadium-sized laser facility housed at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California has unequivocally achieved its goal of ignition in four of its last six attempts, creating a reaction that generates pressures and temperatures greater than those that occur inside the sun. I mean, this is incredible. I'm feeling pretty good, says Richard Town, a physicist who heads the lab's inertial confinement fusion science program at the LLNL. I think we should all be proud of this achievement and talk about understatement of the century. The NIF was designed not as a power plant, but as a facility to recreate and study the reactions that occurred during thermonuclear detonations after the United States halted underground weapons testing in 1992. Nature.com says that the higher fusion yields are already being used to advance nuclear weapons research. Not sure I'm okay with that. And have also fueled enthusiasm about fusion as a limitless source of clean energy. Limitless source of clean energy. That's the key here. US Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry, called for new international partnerships to advance fusion energy at the COP28 Climate Summit in Dubai last week. And the US Department of Energy, which oversees the NIF, followed up by announcing the new research hubs to be led by the LLNL, the University of Rochester in New York and Colorado State University in Fort Collins. Building the NIF was a leap of faith for many. Its success has had a real impact on the fusion community who are just so excited right now. There's so much excitement in the fusion community in the nuclear fusion industry, basically. People are just going, wow, this is groundbreaking. 
And there's also a big change in public perception, says Saskia Mordik, a physicist at William and Mary, a university in Williamsburg, Virginia. In that sense, what is important is that scientists said they could do something. And then they actually did it. The NIF works by firing 192 laser beams at a frozen pallet of the hydrogen isotopes deuterium and tritium that is housed in a diamond capsule suspended inside a gold cylinder. The resulting implosion causes the isotopes to fuse, creating helium and copious quantities of energy. On the 5th of December 2022, those fusion reactions for the first time generated more energy, roughly 54% more than the laser beams delivered to the target. And 54% more is a huge difference because when the experiment first worked, it was only a couple of percent more. So the fact they've gone from a couple of percent more energy being achieved out of the explosion than what is actually being put in, out of the fusion reaction than what is being put in, is a huge achievement. They're going from a few percent to a 54% net energy gain. The facility set a new record on the 30th of July when its beams delivered the same amount of energy to the target, 2.05 megajoules. But this time, the implosion generated 3.88 megajoules of fusion energy, an 89% increase over the input energy. So they've gone from almost the same output of energy as what's being put in to 54%, to 89%. It's such an incredible achievement within the space of only 12 months time. Scientists at the laboratory achieved ignition during two further attempts in October. And the laboratory's calculations suggest that two others in June and September generated slightly more energy than the lasers provided. So looking at this chart here, you can see the incredible progress that they're making. It's actually shows that this is repeatable, not only repeatable, but each time they repeat it, they're actually doing a little bit better than they did before. For many scientists, the results confirm that the laboratory is now operating in a completely new area, a new frontier. Researchers can repeatedly hit a goal they've been chasing for decades. Tiny variations in the laser pulses or minor defects in the diamond capsule can still allow energy to escape, making for an imperfect implosion. But the scientists now better understand the main variables at play. And crucially, how to manipulate those variables. Even when we have these issues, we can still get more than a megajoule of fusion energy, which is good, said Anne Critcher, the lead designer. New hubs, what's happening? Uh, what, what will the future be? Is there gonna be nuclear fusion projects all across the United States? Well, possibly. It's a long way from there though, to providing fusion energy to the power grid. That's the big challenge that comes next. And the NIF, although currently home to the world's largest laser, is not well suited for that actual task. The facility's laser system is enormously inefficient, and more than 99% of the energy that goes into a, a single ignition attempt is lost before it can actually reach the target. Developing more efficient laser systems is one goal of the Department of Energy's new inertial fusion energy research program. This month, the agency announced US $42 million over four years to establish three new research and production centers, each involving a mix of national laboratories, university researchers, and of course, industry partners or entrepreneurs. They will all work pretty much together or side by side towards the goal of truly creating limitless energy and getting that started first in the United States. This investment is the first coordinated effort to develop not just the technology, says Nature.com, but also the workforce for a future laser fusion industry, says Carmen Minoni, a physicist who is heading at the hub at Colorado State University. So far, most government investments in fusion energy research have gone towards devices known as tokamaks, which use magnetic fields inside a donut-shaped torus to confine fusion reactions. This is the approach under development at ITER, an international partnership to build the world's largest fusion facility near St. Paul Le Durance, France. Tokamaks have also been the focus of many fusion investments in the private sector, but dozens of companies are pursuing other approaches such as laser fusion. 
The timing for a dedicated laser fusion program is right, and the decision to pursue it wouldn't have happened without the NIF's recent success. We now know it will work, she says. What will take time is to develop the technology to a level where we can build a power plant. That's what's next. Power plants, true nuclear fusion power plants, which will probably pop up all over the world and could eventually replace some remaining fossil fuel plants. If there's any coal and gas power plants left in say 10 years time, they'll probably be replaced by this type of technology. Or maybe not. I'm not sure here. What are your thoughts? Let me know what you think. Back at the NIF, Krichner's latest series of experiments features a 7% boost in laser energy, which should in theory lead to even larger yields. So 94% yields could become 200% within 12 months time. The first experiment in this series was one of the successful ignitions on the 30th of October. Although it didn't break the record, an import of 2.2 megajoules of laser energy yielded an output of 3.4 megajoules of fusion energy, which is a huge net surplus. Krichner chalks up the fact that it didn't break the record for energy yield to growing pains with the new laser configuration, which is designed to squeeze more energy into the same gold cylinder. Before moving to a larger cylinder, Kritcher says her team is going to focus on changes to the laser pulse that could produce a more symmetrical implosion. We've got four experiments next year, she says. It's exciting. Let's see. Will this t change the world? Could it change the planet? Well, it will change one thing. That is the future of space exploration. To truly be an interplanetary species, I think we need nuclear fusion. However, when it comes to nuclear fusion on the face of the Earth, well, here's the challenge. The cost of solar and batteries has declined by incredible amounts over the past 20 years. But over the past 12 months, those both of those technologies have come down in price by approximately 40%. That's what fusion has to contend with. If we see further declines in the cost of renewable energy, then fusion will have to be considered in the context of how much money do we have to spend for the actual investment we're getting back. What is the return on investment? At this point, no one really knows. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of this. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, I have to say, and this actually could be a game changer. Thanks for watching.